Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video we are looking at something that everybody loves and that is a, a giant bloody turret. And this is the Nemesis turret which is this thing right here. So this is a gigantic gun with loads and loads of Gatling guns on the very end of the barrel to the point where it's less of a machine gun and more of a instant death laser. So this is what we get right here. Those four pillars are all connected up to this main base and this is the main turret there with lots and lots of pretty lights. If I was to bring up this little menu and switch it over to the night time, we do get quite a fancy glow there and some blinking red light. But I'll switch it back to daytime so the people on mobile can actually see stuff. So pressing F10 and finding the uh, nemesis, this turret weighs in at 7,526 large blocks. So this one is a very big one. It uses no mods, it's entirely vanilla, but it does use some of the uh, DLC blocks as a decoration. Now it does say warning static grid only, but don't let this fool you. This turret can spin all the way around. It's put on the rotor, so I'm not sure why it says static only. So let's start by, in fact, let me start by finding it again. If I spawn it in, you'll see exactly what I mean. You can see the four pillars there have been attached via just steel blocks and it goes all the way underneath. If we look underneath there, you can see where this thing can be plopped into the ground. So if my weird keyboard can let me just rotate this properly. So if you rotate it properly, you just plop this into the ground until those little metal blocks there at the bottom disappear. So you just paste it in like that and you're good to go. Anyway, this is what we get. We get a large turret with some blinking lights. We are, of course, using the turret script. So we have the slave turret at the back there that will automatically target the enemies like they normally do. Except this time the script will force the entire turret to follow and shoot it. I've showcased a few turrets that use this script. So you should be fairly familiar with these types of turrets. This is the barrel at the front there. These are all the Gatling guns and a single camera in the dead center so you can aim it manually. This turret is very unique because if you press a button, it will drop down essentially like its mouth at the bottom there and it will reveal to you rockets that could be fired. But I'll come to that a little bit later on. Moving across on the barrel there, we can see lots and lots of detail. We can see the wonkiness there of how that bit would just plop down and reveal the turrets, like I said. But there's so much detail on this and it looks absolutely glorious. So coming back to the very front, we're going to have to go through the barrel here by clipping straight through it. So through the Gatling guns, and through several rotors and blocks and all that, we will eventually get to the rockets, which are right here. So these are the hidden rockets that can be deployed. They've all been timer blocks, so they fire in a pattern and not all at the same time. They'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, like that. Then if we continue along here, this is the main barrel of the gun. It's very hollow, so it's very weak and can be easily shot out by a stray missile. There is a lot of detail going on here. Then we can come all the way back to the end of the turret where you have lots of rotors that are holding it all together. And I could just reverse out there. It's just a lot of block work. It's plain blocks. It's using a clean block skin. But what they've done with it is absolutely incredible. But now we come to the main body. So here are the supports holding the gun onto the base. They're simply at a diagonal there, nothing too special about them. And they go down to this little platform over here, which has a singular rotor, which you can see it right there, an advanced rotor, which allows it to turn in a full 360. At the back of the barrel, we've got a blast door edge. And coming up to the very top, we've got our slave turret, which is just a plain missile turret, which looks very good with the white clean skin. I've never noticed that before. Yes, that's our slave turret, a very useful thing. Be sure never to destroy that or you will lose the automatic shooting function. But now we come down to the large base, which at the back has got some conveyors that stick out with some windows over the top, just for a little bit of decoration, which go over to this connector here. This is how we're going to refuel our turret if you are in survival mode, if you decide to build such a large turret in survival mode, that is. As for the rest of the base, there's not too much going on there. It's just some nice block work to stop it from being a complete square 
at the base. Then as we come around to the front, we've got some steps going up. Now do ignore the grey step and the steel block there. I had to place it there because when I spawned it in, I couldn't quite get it right because this ground isn't completely flat. Now we just take a quick look at the bottom of the base here. So we've got some flashing red lights. This is the opposite side of the support. And that is the underneath of the barrel. So it's a very well put together turret. Does have quite a few weak spots which could easily be shot out. But then again, this is more for design than it is for functionality. There is the turret in all its glory. So now it's time to take control of my character. And we can have a little play on the inside. Up the steps here, ignoring the grey ones like I said. We come onto the interior. Double doors there, so we've got an airlock. And we're instantly greeted by an air vent. So we can spawn this on the moon if you wanted to. On our left, we've got a programmable block. Which is how the turret script is working. We've got the DLC blocks there. The planters, the chair. And all that, we've got our beds. We've got a clock on the DLC projector. Didn't think you could do that. That's quite a clever idea, actually. And we got the armory at the back. Turning round, we have this LCD screen which tells you a little bit of information about the turret. So its name is Nemesis. The turret type is a heavy ground unit and it's an anti-frigate, anti-fighter turret. The turret contains 41 Gatling guns and 9 rocket launchers. Coming across to the opposite side, we have the main control seat with some lovely LCD panels that have been angled via a rotor, which is right back here. Very well done. And then we got beside it, two little programmable blocks, nothing is going on with them, just one has a clock being displayed. We have two chairs at the very back there that contain nothing on the control panel. And right over here we have the time blocks, which I presume would be for the rockets to fire in the pattern. So now it's time to get into the chair, come into first person. On our left we have a constantly scrolling script of all the little components on the ship. Our central screen is for the programmable block, telling you everything that's going on. And on the right hand side, we've got the radar script, which will tell you if any of the evil enemies and pesky neutral enemies are coming into range and need to be shot. And of course, the absolute worst enemy, the allied enemy, who never know when they might attack you. Let's go into third person, and we've got a few options to be using. Number one is to activate the automatic turret. There are no enemies nearby, so it's not going to do anything. Number two will disable the automatic turret, so it will just sit here like it is right now even if an enemy comes by. Number three is to manually control the turret, and number four plops down its mouth and reveals the rocket turret. Then we can press it again to hide it. Pressing number three for manual control, we got the camera which sits at the dead center of the Gatling guns. Number two, although you can't see it in that screen, that did just drop down the rockets. And now number 5 and number 6 are what I added. When you paste in this blueprint, there are no buttons to actually manually fire the Gatling guns or the rockets. So you have to do what I did and simply paste them in from here and drag them over to the bar down there if you want to manually control it. But I can press number 1 and I can turn it over to here and this is the Gatling gun firing. Like I said, it's essentially a laser beam now and will just tear everything apart. You can control the turret with mouse, so moving your mouse up and down will do that very carefully, not destroying it. And moving your mouse left and right will, of course, turn it all the way around. If you were to press number 6 to try and fire the rocket launcher, it will not do anything until you deployed it. There will be a slight delay there, and then you can start firing the rockets. So here the rockets firing in their lovely pattern. There we go. Your screen is now dead. And then I can come into first person view and start firing like this. Unfortunately I have fired too many of them so the smoke trail has ended. There's the smoke trail again. We can just keep firing into that base and if we wanted to we could just close that up, switch to the Gatling guns and unleash hell onto the starting Earth base. So there we go we just fire it just left and right it. There we go we destroy that. Let's zoom it in. Look at, look at all the little projectiles coming out of that turret. That ship is gone. We can keep firing. Oh yeah, that ship is gone. Look at that go. We can zoom in a little bit more. That's the maximum zoom I can do. 
constantly shooting. If we just carefully move our mouse to the left... Oh, the game is chugging a little bit. The game does not like this, apparently. We can slowly delete that base. Whew. And that'll be enough of that. Let the game catch up. We've done quite a number. But now we can switch to the rockets. And start bringing these in. Look at them go in slow motion there. Destroy that ship. You can, you can sort of see, like, every now and again a red square appearing, which is the aiming thing. And we keep firing it like this. The turret will wobble around a bit while firing the rockets. There's nothing you can do about that. You simply have to adjust your aim a little bit to ensure you don't hit anything you don't want to hit. So there's the rockets. Switch back to the galley guns. At this point, I'm having too much fun with this. Oh, this is just glorious. So many projectiles everywhere. It's like fitting an Imperial Cutter with nothing but multi cannons. And there goes the roof. The roof has now been completely disconnected on the base. I think that'll do. I've, I've just lingered on that bit for a bit too long. But this is the turret. Next thing to do, of course, is to bring in an enemy ship. In fact, I know the best ship to test against the turret, which I have always used to test these giant turrets, the... There she is. This ship weighing in at 9,077 blocks, the one that always deploys its parachutes for defense. Let's paste that in right there. And while that's pacing in, in fact, it's pacing very quickly for some reason, let's take a look at the damage of this base. So that turret with all those Gatling guns, with all those missiles, has done a pretty big number on this base. I suppose it could be a light paint scratch if you really look at it. Just cover that bit over there with a little bit of white paint and I'm sure it'll look good as new. No, now it's time to actually find this ship. And so this will be the ending of the video. Ooh. Ooh, I think I missed that out when I showcased this ship. Look at that. Ooh, that blue light. Anyway, yes, I'm going to give this entire ship to the pirates. So, selecting everything. Transfer everything to the pirates. And there goes the turret. The turret instantly turns. The slave turret is now targeting the ship. So therefore, the actual turret itself is going to start targeting. There goes the parachutes. Oh my god, the ship never fails to deliver on the parachutes. Look at them go. The greatest weapon in space engineers is, of course, the parachutes. Nothing can stand in their way. They are just too powerful. There goes the turret. It's now targeting all the little individual things that the rocket turret targets. Although I think the rocket turret itself is actually destroying it before the turret can take control of it. But you can see there the script is trying to align the turret. It is a little bit bouncy, but there are all the guns firing. Look at them go. And then it's doing the little wiggle around while it tries and rearranges itself. But it's not doing it fast enough. The game is slowing down, so I need to help it out just a little bit by taking control over the turret and firing it manually. So let's now just start launching everything in there. Goodbye turret, instantly deleted. Let's get rid of that turret under there. All right, that turret is now gone. That turret is now gone. We then undo that bit, switch the rockets, and there goes the rocket launchers. There we go. It's a shame you can't left mouse for the rockets, right mouse for the machine guns and just fire everything at once. That would be glorious. Let me just keep firing this into there. Let's get rid of some of that black bit there. I think it's grey. It might be black. I can't really see it properly. There we go. We can switch to the gallings again. Let's get rid of this base bit. At this point, the video is done. This is the turret. And now I'm just killing stuff for the sake of killing stuff. I should have put the tank explosions on this. That would have gone up in flames. Kind of like that. We can just get rid of this big circle there.
deleted. Goodbye. It's amazing how weak the Gatling turret actually feels when firing like this, yet when a pirate comes and shoots up your ship, it just tears straight through it. It's always very weird to see. Let's get rid of that large ion right there. And that large hydrogen, which I think is already disconnected. That'll do. That'll do for the- oh, it redeployed its parachutes! Can't be having none of that. Anyway, yes, this is the Nemesis turret. It'll be in the description below if you wish to download and play around with it yourself. You don't need to have any other mods to download with this for it to work. Just paste it in, make sure scripts are enabled, and you're good to go. So yes, it'll be in the description below if you want to download and play around with it yourself. And I'll be back with another showcase video some point soon. Goodbye.